The portion of God's word that we'll focus on on this New Year's Eve comes from James chapter 4. Let's begin with prayer. God, Father, Son, and Spirit here, to all our pleas incline your ear. Upon our lives rich blessing trace in this new year of grace. Amen. You might say that I am a planner. Between my phone and my computer, I pretty much have my calendar at my fingertips at all times. And every week, at the beginning of the week, I I sit down with my calendar and this yellow-lined pad of paper, and I schedule out my week day by day, jotting down all of the tasks that I need to accomplish on each of those days, Monday through Saturday. And if I'm feeling extra ambitious, sometimes I will even go so far as to schedule it out each day as to what times and parts of the day I want to accomplish each of those tasks, depending on making sure that I can maximize my energy levels and things like that. You might say that's a bit hyper-planning, right? Over-planning. But even if you're not an over-planner like me, I don't think I'm alone in being a planner. We're kind of a culture of planners, aren't we? We hire travel agents to plan out our family vacations, every detail of them, months, maybe even a year in advance. Little girls usually have their dream wedding planned out before they're even old enough to start dating. Companies will plan out their their yearly schedule, the goals that they want to achieve over the next year. College students will sit down and look at which majors are going to bring them into the best possible higher rates and which are going to get them into the, the most lucrative fields. People are looking at retirement and planning for that, setting aside money all throughout their career so that then someday they can retire. Even churches like Victory set a 5 or 10 or 20 year vision plan. See, we're a culture of planners. And as the year transitions from 2019 into 2020, I'm sure that you've already been making plans for the coming year. What does God think about all that future planning? Take a look at what James says in the beginning of our sermon text for today. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. Is he being critical of future planning here? It kind of sounds like it, doesn't it? So should we be going to all this time and all this trouble, spending so much time planning out 2020 and and much further into the future? Or should we just sit back and, and put and entrust the future into God's hands and let him do with it what he will? The answer is yes. The ultimate cop out answer, yes, right down the center, right? Because God is not opposed to us planning for the future. In fact, he encourages us to do so. Because most of the time when we do that kind of planning and we plan for the future and we get things scheduled and orderly, oftentimes it turns out to make us better stewards of the things that God has given to us. If we plan financially, if we schedule things for our future so that we can use our our abilities and talents that God has given to us in the best possible way, ultimately that goes to serve God, does it not? And as much as you might think that I am an over-planner, the fact is there's a method to my madness. See, I do all that stuff because I I know myself. And I know that if I don't write down all the things that I need to accomplish during the course of the week, both in ministry and in my personal life, I will either forget to do it altogether or I will get so far behind in things that I'll never get caught up enough to finish the things I actually have to accomplish. See, writing it down, planning it out, scheduling it for me makes me a better steward of the vocation that God has given to me. And maybe you're the same way. It says, Jesus himself illustrates, Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? If we're making plans for the future, we're certainly going to be making plans in the here and the now to make sure that future can be set, right? And so planning is not a bad thing. The actual act of planning for the future is not the problem here. 
What James says the problem is, is the, the mindset that we can often have as we're making those future plans. James takes us into the, the mindset of some, uh, of some merchants here, some businessmen. And as we get into this text, we'll see, as we begin a new year, there is two important reminders that God wants to take, us, take with us as, as we carry out our future plans. The first one is this. You ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this and that. See, James puts us in the mind of those merchants. They've got a business plan put together. They're going to go to a certain land. They're going to live there for a year. They're going to do business and make money. Is there anything wrong with that business plan? No, not at all. But what James makes clear for us in this scenario is that these men, as they made their business plan, they were focused entirely on themselves. See, they had left God out of the plan. And it's really easy to do that, isn't it? We make these big, bold plans for ourselves, big, bold plans for our future and all the things that, that we're going to do. And we put together an agenda and a schedule of all the things that we need to accomplish to make those goals happen. But how easy it for, is it for us to think only about what we do and not God's role? See, oftentimes the plans that we make for our lives are not the way that our lives actually go because our plans and God's plan is not always the same. And I often get reminded of that when I compare the, the schedule for the week that I've laid out at the beginning of the week with how the week actually went when everything went through. They rarely, if ever, are lined up perfectly, right? Because inevitably, someone will stop by and need to talk with me about something, or they'll call on the phone and need to talk about something. Or someone gets sick or falls and they end up in the hospital and I have to go visit them. Or the dog gets ticks and needs to go to the vet. Or a kid gets sick and needs to go for a doctor's appointment. See, things come up that we aren't always planning for. And not to say that those are bad things. In fact, what I've found often is that the things that are unplanned are often the things that we need to spend the most careful attention on rather than the things that we have scheduled. And it's a reminder for us that God's plan is not always our plan, and yet there's a reason for that. Because ultimately, God's plans are better. And likewise, when we plan out our schedule and we plan out our lives, no matter how perfectly, carefully planned out we have it, no matter how much it seems like everything is perfectly lined up to go just the way we want it to, uh, the fact is, as we make our plans, we always have to put them in God's hands. To put our future and our future plans into God's hands and humbly acknowledge that, that our plans are not going to move forward unless God wills them to move forward. And so as we make our future plans, we always do so with what the proverb tells us. In his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. As you see, my sinful nature... Sometimes when those interruptions come and they throw off my schedule of what I think should be happening during the course of the day, I, I get frustrated or upset about that, even if it's something important. In the same way, oftentimes in our own lives, we get frustrated and angry when, when God's plans don't always line up with our plans. And yet the antidote for that is to understand this. Just like we talked about this past Sunday, that, that God's plans are always better than our plans. That's not to say that our plans are always bad or that they're always wrong. But God's are always better. Because even though the year is 2020, my view of the future is not 2020. But God's is. See, God knows perfectly everything that's going to happen in the future and God knows perfectly what plans need to be carried out so that we can have that future that he knows is best for us. And so... Even though we might have our plans and we make them in earnest and we make them with great joy and anticipation, the fact is God's future promises are, are so much better because he knows what's going to happen and he knows how to make that happen for your good. That's an incredible comfort, isn't it? To know that God has our future in his hands. And when we remember that, yes, you can plan out your day, you can plan out your week, you can plan out your month or your year or 20 years into the future. 
but you always do so in the back of your mind with the thought in your heart, if it's the Lord's will. Yes, you can make plans and you can put together goals that you're going to shoot for and strive for, and that's well and good, but always in the back of your mind, you keep that thought, if it's the Lord's will. And in your heart and from your lips, we say, and your will be done, Jesus, because it's a far better will than mine. So that's the first thing. Lord, if it's your will. The second is this. God also reminds us, what is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. The fact is, God never promises us another day. In our plans, we might have 20 years into the future mapped out already, exactly how we think things need to go. But in God's plans for your future and your earthly life, at least, might not even last another 20 seconds. See, we have these grand thoughts and these grand plans, and yet God acknowledges that the, we have no idea how much time we have left. And that really sets our priorities, doesn't it? You see, I can spend countless hours, I can work tirelessly to, to advance myself and my business, to make a lot of money and really make myself something. I can work tirelessly with my children to mold them into all-star athletes or to Mensa geniuses or, or platinum recording artists. But if our lives in this earth is nothing more than a, a mist that eventually vanishes, well, what's the best plans that we can be making for our future? The best plans for 2020 is this, to feed your faith. And so in the year ahead, through word and sacrament, make plans to feed your faith and to feed the faith of your children and to feed the faith of your spouse and to share the good news of Jesus, your Savior, with your friend or your family member, or your relative or your coworker. Do everything you can. Make plans for this future to fall deeper in love with Jesus as you come to a greater understanding and appreciation of the perfect love that he has shown to you and to me. That's the best plan that we can make. And we make our plans to focus on Jesus and to grow closer in our faith and stronger in our faith in him. Well, then our, our future is set. It's taken care of. Because our certainty, our eternal life is a certainty in Jesus. And so planning to take care of our faith and our faith in Jesus, that makes us completely prepared and completely certain no matter how many minutes or years or, or millennia we have left in this world. See, whether 2020 is going to be the, the best year of your life by earthly standards or whether it's going to be the hardest year of your life, in your earthly perspective, or whether it's going to be the last year of your life. The fact is, we put it in God's hands. We go towards the future, humbly trusting and acknowledging that, that God's plans are best, that God's plan is what needs to happen. And we want to keep that in our minds and on our hearts at all times over the coming year and every day of our lives. And I have to tell you, when I take this yellow line pad of paper and I, I write down my daily schedule on it, Monday through Friday, you know what the first thing at the top of the list is? Devotion and prayer. And I say that not because I'm saying what a wonderful person I am that I put devotion and prayer first. That's me acknowledging that unless I put it at the top of my list of things to do, I so easily forget it and let it slip off my list altogether. But to start your day, to spend every day focusing on the love of Jesus, what better way to spend your day? What better plans to make for your future? Knowing that our God loves us so much that he gave us his one and only son. May that be on your heart today as we start into a new year and in every day to come. Amen. Please stand.